welcome to the very first episode of Mills Kitchen. My name is Milena, I go by Mills, and you are now tuned in to Mills Kitchen. So first and foremost, I wanna welcome everyone to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I am so excited to not only launch this YouTube channel, it's been um, something I've been thinking about um, for a while now, but also to share some recipes with you. Some might be familiar, some might be new. We're gonna have a really good time. Yeah, so please, um, you know, share, subscribe, like, and comment. Tell all your friends and family about it. Um, hopefully you learned something new. And um, without further ado, let's get started on today's episode. All right, guys, so let's get into the ingredients that you're going to need to make your delicious dojo. Now, this recipe has been passed down from my grandmother to my mother and now to me, and I am sure you all will enjoy it as well. Now, in order to make your dojo today, you will need half a cup of olive oil, two tablespoons of desmi or cured butter. Another key ingredient in making dojo is barbara. Now I have about half a cup of barbara here. You might want to add more or less depending on your preferred spice level. Again, I love spicy foods myself personally. So um, that is why I have um, this much barbara here. Now, next you are going to be needing salt to taste. Now I have two tablespoons of salt here. I typically add my salt at the end once I gauge the level of sodium intake my other seasonings contribute. Now, another key ingredient in dorho is onions. You will need a ton of onions for this dish, okay? Um, typically, I'm not a, a very big onion intake person. However, this dish requires um, you know, a lot of onions, so I have a total of six onions here. Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, geez, that is a ton of onions. However, once you start cooking them, they tend to kind of welt um, and it doesn't seem like there, you know, there's many. Now, um, next you're going to need your chicken. Now, I have some organic drumsticks here, okay? Now, um, I will also be adding some wings just to give it, um, you know, a bit of a variety there. Now, a very important step is cleaning the chicken and you're going to be needing lime. I'm going to be showing you guys how to um, clean the chicken like I stated. Now, another um, important or key ingredient in making dorho is going to be eggs, okay? You are going to need, um, depending on how many people you are cooking for, um, you might need anywhere from 8 to 12 eggs. Now, um, I have 8 here. Um, again, depending on how many people you're going to be cooking for, you might need more. Now, um, lastly, I have a food processor here for my onions. Just to simplify and minimize the prep time, I felt like it was very important to go ahead and get the food processor. Let me tell you guys, it is a game changer. So that's all you're really going to need. So now um, we are going to go ahead and move forward. Um, now the first step in cooking dorho, like I previously stated, it is very important to thoroughly wash your chicken. So to do so, we are going to fill a bowl or a bucket with water and um, sprinkle half a cup of salt in it. Also slice up some lime or lemon and wash your chicken while squeezing fresh lime and lemon juice into the chicken. Now repeat this step at least four times, rinsing and cleaning your chicken thoroughly. Now, once you're done with the process, you are going to go ahead and leave the chicken and just kind of have it soak in the salt, water, and lime juice until you are ready. All right, guys, so we are gonna go ahead and move forward. So as you can see, I have my eggs here. I am um, adding them to a pot that I have already boiled with water. Now, um, it takes about 10 minutes on high heat for your eggs to be completely boiled. Um, now, once you see that they are, you know, coming to a boil, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and take them out and you want to go ahead and start to peel them. 
Now you might want to set them aside for a bit as they cool down or you can rinse them with water and peel them that way. All right guys, so now I have my onions, which I use the food processor to cut. Again guys, if you do not have a food processor yet, please make sure you go ahead and go get one. It will save you a ton of time, especially when you are making dishes like dorho that would just require a lot of onions. Okay guys, so in a pot running on medium low, you are going to go ahead and add your onions and cook them until they are nice and golden. Please make sure that you watch your pot and stir accordingly so you can avoid overcooking or burning your onions. Alrighty guys, now this is completely optional. However, in my recipe that has been passed down, um, for my grandma and mom, um, we do add garlic. We are garlic lovers. I personally adore garlic. I can never have too much. Um, so I am going to be adding minced garlic as well as garlic paste and ginger. Also, I'm going to be adding cardamom. Um, and so this is completely optional, but I find it maximizes the flavor in the dish. Plus, who doesn't like garlic, right? All right guys, so close your lid, open back up after about 30 minutes of cooking all the seasoning and you will see that your onions are nice and uh, golden brown. All right guys, so now that our onions are nice and golden, we are going to go ahead and add our barbera to the pot and mix. Now, um, please make sure that you stir as needed. Onions cook really quickly, so you wanna make sure that you are checking on your pot um, frequently. Now, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and add our garlic and ginger paste. Now, we are gonna go ahead and add our minced garlic. Love garlic, so the more the merrier. Make sure to go ahead and mix your pot and all of your seasonings in together. Alright guys, now that my barbera has been um, in the stew for a minute and cooking um, evenly throughout the pot, I'm going to go ahead and add two um, cups of water to my stew, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and mix, making sure that none of the onions are burnt at the bottom. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close my lid for about an hour. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and check my stew um, periodically again to make sure that there is nothing burning at the bottom. As you can see, that is cooking very beautifully. Oh, the smell and the aroma right now. Mm, I can't wait till it's done so I can go ahead and eat. All right, guys. So now that the uh, dorho has been cooking for about an hour now, we are going to go ahead and add our butter or tesmi. And then we are going to go ahead and close the lid and cook it for about another hour, okay? Yes, dorho does take about two hours and a half to cook, but trust me, it is worth the wait. Uh, make sure to check on your pot and, um, you know, it is looking and smelling so amazing. I wish you guys can smell the aroma going on in my kitchen right now. Mmm, so yummy. Okay guys, so at this point my stew has cooked evenly and I am getting ready to add my chicken here. Now I'm going to go ahead and add all my chicken and mix them in the stew, covering each one with enough sauce. And then I'm going to go ahead and close the lid back on the pan and let the chicken cook for 30 minutes on medium low. Make sure that you are stirring your stew, I can't stress this enough and make sure that you are checking on your pot to make sure it doesn't burn. Mmm, look at that guys. Oh my God, it smells so amazing. So delicious.
All right, guys. Now, one of the last couple things I'm going to do is add my salt to taste. Now, generally, the chicken um, does have a lot of sodium in it. However, I'm going to go ahead and gauge my level of sodium that's already in the pot um, and then go ahead and add my salt. Make sure you stir, stir, stir. All right, guys, it is about done. Um, I still have it on medium low and I'm just kind of um, watching it, making sure everything still looks good, smells good, um, almost wrapping it up. So now we are going to get to the last and final step in making dorho, and that is adding the eggs to the stew. Now I am going to add my eggs in there and just kind of mix them with the stew, making sure that each egg gets all of the juicy stew. All right. How good does that look? Oh my God, it looks so amazing. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that I uh, stir it and you know get all of the juice juices um, flowing throughout the eggs. Yum. good does this look guys and voila your dorho is now done now i want you guys to please stick around for um a complimentary popular dish often served with dorho which is rigo or yogurt now for the yogurt or rugo all you're going to need is buttermilk parsley and a tablespoon of vinegar so what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to add your buttermilk into a pot like so and add your vinegar next. Okay, now make sure that your temperature is on medium high as you want to cook the buttermilk in high heat. Okay, so now as you can see, the buttermilk is, um, you know, uh, starting to get a flaky um, cottage cheese consistency and no longer the watery, runny buttermilk consistency. Okay, so you wanna go ahead and cook this for about three minutes, and then you are going to go ahead and strain this and um, get all of the excess water and butter out into the strainer. So after you um, you know, strain your yogurt, um, it will be ready, and all you need to do is plate it and garnish it with some parsley. And voila guys, I have my dorho, my rugo, ready to be served on top of some delicious injera, zesty salata, and yummy sambusa. And hey, next time you know you guys are going to have a group of friends or family over, make sure to try this recipe. I guarantee they will love it. So there you have it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Cooking with Mills and I can't wait to have you guys try this out. Please let me know what you think of this recipe. Please also make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you guys back here next week for another episode of Cooking with Mills.